Hi guys, it's Jim at Jim's fix -It Shop, and today we're going to do a honeydew job. We got some of these little solar lights that my wife picked up to kind of remind her of a loved one we lost last year. But we don't get enough direct sunlight to charge the battery. It barely goes all night long. So we're going to tear two of them apart and put the photo cell from the second one wired in the unit and charge the battery hopefully twice as much. Let me get this camera adjusted and I'll show you what I did. Okay I hope you can see we've got two of these. We're gonna we pulled this one apart, took the guts out of it, wired in another smaller wire to run up through the base. Now the hardest part is getting it fed up through here. I think I better go on a commercial break and try to feed this wire in. Okay, that was painful getting that wire up in there. Now we're going to wire, solder a couple longer leads on this photo cell so it'll reach to the other battery. This is extremely small wire. If I had to guess I would probably say it's 30 or 35 gauge. It's extremely small. Now yeah, we're going to just put a little tape over top that joint, nothing fancy. Like who's gonna see it? It's only putting out one and a half volts, so you don't really even have to worry about it. Now the extra photo cell we're gonna use, we could just rip the guts out of it. This is a switch and the uh, battery holder. You can see we got the new leads soldered on to the photo cell and brought up through the base into the top one that we're going to use the parts. We might as well throw this cover on. Which will probably be a trick in itself. Now we can concentrate on this top cell. We got the wires up in here and we made them plenty long. We're going to solder them to the, I don't know if you can even see this, we're going to solder the new wires to the contacts on the battery holder. We're not going to mess with the uh, components in the original unit. So we got going to cut this wire off hardest part is stripping this without actually just cutting the wire in half. It is so fine. Now, if you can hold that on there somehow, that's the next trick. To solder it. And I don't think you can see any of this. It's just too small. There's a little clip here to try and hold that wire in place. Hmm. Yeah, this is fun. But if it makes the wife happy, It's all worth it. Now that one's in place. I'm going to curl this one around. Cut that off about there. I make these wires a little longer than you think what you need. 
because it's so easy to cut them in half when you're trying to strip them. Now we got to curl this back around and touch it on the end of this battery holder. This end we got a lot of the little circuit boards got a lot of contacts in the way and we don't want to put too much solder on there and short the whole thing out. Hmm. This could prove to be a handful. We just pull that right out of there. We can put that there and clamp it. Oh, by golly, I think that might work. This should be interesting trying to do this left handed. by golly, I think they might have it. Well, I guess if you totally screw it up, they're only six bucks. You can go, you can go buy another one and try it again. They say your practice makes perfect. And this is a handful. So we got that tucked in there, finally. Now, rechargeable battery that came with it. Poke that down in there. Get this wire up in here. So it's somewhat waterproof. Get the cover on without pinching one of these goofy little wires. I guess what we'll do is tape that thing down out of the way. There we go. Okay. Tighten them little screws up, and I think we just might be done with this job. The battery isn't even charged up enough to light it. But, hopefully, tomorrow, with two chargers on here, that battery will be charged up enough so this thing will run all night, and it will be on in the morning yet. And maybe I'll have a smile on her face. So until next time, work safe and good luck. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because the uh, snapper build's coming. I sure hope so. I found out they're not sending the parts UPS. They're sending them snail mail for some reason. So that's probably why they're taking so long to get here. If you have any questions or comments, email me at jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. I'll put the description down at the bottom. Till next time, good luck.